he uh, had, a, had a hard time getting on. That several starts and stops on the post. What you're looking at here is my Thunderbolt from 2005. And uh, the reason I'm showing this is uh, look at look at the paint job on that airplane. It was absolutely beautiful. That's in Win Paul's book for 2007, Plane of the Year. So let's take this one off. And, and then, of course, there's my Junior that I fly. That's me and Billy Warwich standing there. That was up in Cleveland. And let's see here. Let's transition. So here we are back at the apartment. It's uh, after a day at John's working on paint work. I'm going to show you some of the flaws that I got in the stupid thing. Just the way it goes. Let me get my hat here. I don't want you to see my head. <laughs> Had Chris Emerson from the forum over. That was pretty cool. He stopped by. He went to the Dayton Monorama today. I didn't go. I paid for two days, but I didn't go today because I wanted to get this thing in white. Let's see here. We want to transition cameras. You love that plane, huh? Which plane is that? Which which plane? Uh, why is that thing out of focus? There we go. Ellen, what airplane are you talking about? My Thunderbolt? Oh, yeah. I'm probably going to build another one. I still have the molds for that and everything. I don't know what I'm going to do. Should I? I got so many plans to build airplanes. There's no way I can die. There's just too many airplanes to build. So, <clears throat> what we got here is I'm going to go around this thing and I'm going to put the tape on it. I don't have John here to to talk about that. We talked about the rudder height on this thing. I might cut a half inch to five eighths of an inch off that rudder just for aesthetics. I, I'm thinking about it. Let's put it that way. But I want to go over this and uh, any spot that's bad, I'm going to put a piece of tape on and I'm going to repair those spots. And next weekend, I'll touch those up before I start painting the red, white, and blue on this thing. Well, we got the white. Before I start painting the red and blue. Remember, this airplane will look just like my other my other airplane when it's done. There's another picture of that Thunderbolt. That was a nice airplane. Bob Hunt held it in his hand. He said, you can't tell if this came off Billy's airplane or not. And he top flight stole my paint job off this airplane. Pissed me off. I got nothing for it. <laughs> they have an ARF, an ARF Thunderbolt, and they stole my paint job. But ain't nothing I can do about it. You like them all, but the Thunderbolt is special. Well, I had a lot of time in that. That's back when I was really building quite a bit. I'm not building as much as I used to now. This is my second airplane this year. I should have done four. I can do one every quarter. So far, John was John was right. This came out better than I thought. I was going to, you know, I kept tinkering with this and tinkering with that, but I don't know. So we'll go around and get the tape here. The biggest problem here is the lighting is nowhere near what it is at John's. I can really see it, John. You can't see 
shit here. So I'm kind of stuck. Unless I take it outside. I know there was a spot here we need to fix. It's a little dent. I don't know when Chris Everson will be home, but you can ask him. He saw it in person, what he thinks of it. We got, uh, got some spots on the back that need fixed. Oh, I need to sand on this right here, this area. You think when you when you're painted, you know you're all done and you, and the sanding's over. This is just beginning. I'm telling you. We picked up two ounces in paint today. I need to uh, address that spot there. There's a spot here. You, as you can see, I'm taking yellow tape, little pieces of yellow tape going around, and we're going to get all the spots. Of course, you never can get them all, but we'll just get the ones that bug me. This just needs some more paint on it. It doesn't need sanded. They're so tiny. Now the bottom is uh, a little bit worse. Now I had a I had an issue I'm going to show you, and I showed Chris Everson how to fix it in person. So I might as well show you guys how to fix it. How to fix it on the web. It's on the bottom, thank God. I need to smooth some putty on that. Of course, we got... A spot there. Let's see. I remember that it was one spot here. I can't get any more light in here. I don't know how I can get any more light. Okay. Oh, that's a night blade now. Cut my toe when I'm walking barefoot. I need that blow heat gun because the paper didn't quite shrink up yet. I'm sure it will. It's, I put the dope on pretty damn heavy right here. Now, I had a tear... It's not a tear. I had a sand in the uh, tissue. I sanded through the tissue right here, right on the hard edge where I told you guys to stay off of. So I tore a square, well, not a square, but a rectangle of double lot silk span and put it over the top of that right there. And yeah, there's some little spots in it right now that you know, some hairs and it's a little rough. I'm gonna sand that. First off, I need to dry it. So we'll get the heat gun. It seems like always on every model I do at least one spot that that screws up. But part of modeling is knowing how to fix this stuff. So I'm going to heat this up here and see if we can tighten up the soap panel a little bit. Yeah, it'll tighten right up. 
pretty hot. And uh, let me see if I can see if I can turn this and get you a better better view of what exactly is going on here. What the heck is? I'm all tied up. Oh man! Chris should have come over here and seen where I'm working. <laughs> wouldn't have, wouldn't believe what kind of airplanes come out of this little closet. Okay. Let me see. Can I point this down anymore? Yeah. Right here is where the patch is. Yeah, you can still see it. But you won't be able to when I sand it and shoot another coat of white on it. Let me look at the screen. Yep, you can see it. That's good. I just want you to see that when things like this happen, don't panic. It's not a big deal. So we'll get a little bit of sandpaper, which is where in this bucket right here. So I... Uh, I did that with sandpaper. That was an accident. Here's a spot here I need to fix. So I need to put a piece of tape there. It's on the underside, but Jim Lynch will not care. <laughs> Doesn't matter how I need to get this right here. I better order some more Aura cover. And some, some more Aura stenciling material. We got spots all over here. So we'll do that. And that. We're at 56 ounces here. I don't want to pork it up. So, so we're not going to... We're going to use the airbrush probably to repair these spots and then uh, and then the touch up gun to put the clear on so I, I screwed this up with sandpaper I'm going to fix it with sandpaper And truth be known, I probably wouldn't even have to paint it again, but yeah, maybe not. Got a few hairs in it, though. The brush I was using at John's was shedding so bad. So... When I tore that patch, what that does is leave it, it's not a straight line. A straight line sticks out like a sore thumb. But if you tear it and then dope it, you can feather, it's just like feathering in a, a paint job. Yeah, it'll take another coat. But I don't want to cut the paper again. And this is just part of part of the deal. I mean, how much are you willing to fix? I'll let that go for now. You get another coat coat on it. Now let's look over here. See, when you think you don't, you did your sanding. I didn't. I didn't get that. There's, you know, I don't know how to explain it. Except that I was asleep with the switch. 
when I sanded that the first time. And you think, well, that's no big deal. Yeah, it is. Because I'll guarantee you, them appearance judges look at every spot of your airplane. Especially if it's nice and they're trying to discern this airplane is better than the other one. So any of these little spots you need to, I mean, it's not a big amount of effort to fix that. Just, just sets me back one week ago. This will make the nets. Whether I fly it or not, I don't know. Of course, I have about the same amount of time on this airplane as I do the Dr. Pepper airplane. <laughs> I got two more flights in the Dr. Airplane, Pepper airplane than I do this one. Maybe, maybe come Tuesday, I'll have four flights on it more. But it's going to be windy. Because that's the nature of the beach in June. If you've ever flown the uh, Nationals in June, you know the wind can go up to 30 mile an hour. I want the big block if possible. Now, I have another big block airplane, but it doesn't fly, fly that great. I used to try to bring, hey, thanks, little history. Yes, this is Silk Span. You've been doing the same thing all day, huh? I try to bring a new airplane every year to the Nats. And I haven't in the last couple, so this year is going to change. The reason being is that Junar flew so damn well, I like flying it. I need to get it back together, get it ready to go. This is a backup for a local contest airplane. Okay, let's get enough. Now, if I remember right, there was some spots in the back of this. Well, this just needs a little, little sanding and a little paint. Now, I got a spot here. That's going to take a little acro. You think, oh man, acro. Yeah, well, I gotta do what I gotta do. And like I said, I'm still debating whether to cut five eighths of an inch off the rudder. You know, if John said, I said, is that rudder too tall? He said, well, I'm debating, yeah, you know, do you want to cut it and reshape it or what? Man, I cut the, I cut my frame on my motorcycle two times within a week and redid it. I had it all back again. I <laughs> did it two times because I wasn't happy with what was done. So making a little cut on a rudder is not a big deal. I will have to think about it though. Let's see. My aqua green. I brought it right here. Here we go. Razor blade. It's just part of my nature. I mean, I if it ain't right, it ain't right.
you know, I'll sit and look at something and go, well, oh, shit, that, that would look a whole lot better this way, so let's do it this way. Most guys, most guys, from where this airplane is at right now, would just say, clear it and paint it, or fly it. But I can't do that. I'm trying to teach you guys how to do an outstanding finish. I can't come out with a rag. So there we go. We put some acryl on it. And I'll touch it up next weekend. on the bottom anyway so I got the same thing on this side on the other one all this is completely my fault for not uh, we're not sanding this stuff out missing All this green shit has to be sanded back off. You bet. Something's wrong, make it right. Because it'll drive me fruit if it ain't fixed. A little void right there. I, I'm probably not going to sand on these tonight. I'll just, uh, I'll let this aqua green dry. Unless it dries real hard. So there you have that, that one there. Okay. Like I said, it's on the bottom, but nobody will see it. Well, they see it when they pick them up and look at them at the judging. I learned this from Jim Lynch, and he's never going to. All right. I will definitely look at it. I'm up. Uh, I'm a subscriber to your channel, Little History. Just, uh, let's see here. I just saw that. Oh, man, what happened to it? I just saw it. I would just stand the whole damn thing and, and be happy. Now, I want to tell you something about painting balsa wood. People say, well, it only added an ounce. I sanded it all back off. Yeah, well, you may sand it all back off, but see, that stuff is thin. And especially if you're painting with a substantial amount of thinner like we do, what it does is it soaks into the wood. You can't sand it all off. It, it's down inside the wood. 
So you may get the top layer off, but but you're not going to get the bottom. You know, it's going into the wood. What I'm doing here is known as color sanding. And uh, in all actuality, this airplane should be color sanded the whole thing and then another co coat of white go on it. But I'm not going to sacrifice the weight. So I'm only going to color sand and fix the spots that I deemed are necessary. Then I'm going to shoot those spots and abandon the rest. And we'll put the trim on it to try to hide any of the areas. And when the clear goes on and it buries underneath, voila, that'll be it. Okay. Because I could spend the next year looking for every ding, dent, crunch, whatever on this thing and go back and paint the whole airplane four or five more times and it still wouldn't be perfect so it ain't it ain't worth it and then of course we got one other thing that happens to our airplanes is hangar rash so about the time that i get all of everything done going up and down john stairs i'll bang it into the door jam and put a dent in it somewhere so you just <laughs> you just can't fret it you gotta Go with the flow. Get it as nice as you can, as light as you can, and be happy. Got a spot there. Yeah, this, this will sand in nicely. I only have that much paint left in the bottom of that mason jar. And that's it, that's all I can use, that much white. So it needs another coat on the cowl because the cowl is still a darker shade of white because it was primed. So it needs another coat on the cowl, which is okay because it's in front of the center of gravity. I don't know why I'm getting so fanatical about the bottom, except for Jim Lynch. There you go. Why you finished the bottom? So now my airplanes are finished just as well on the bottom as they are on the top, and they're finished just as well inside as they are outside. If you don't believe me, ask Chris Everson. He was here to see it. Ask him if it was sanded is just as nice inside as out. Happy little circles were circling. <laughs> Sand the crap out of that to get it out. I tell you what, you know, when you're in this apartment and you think you got it all because you got clear dope on it or whatever, you shoot some fit, finish, and a you know, uh, fit and I'll just say fit and finish and aesthetics, I guess. The model should be, and they're actually judging them wrong. They should, the rule book says 10 foot away, but they're looking at them with a microscope. You know, they're all holding them. And they're looking at them real quick. Well, look at that. And they're feeling it. No, they're supposed to be 10 foot away, according to the rule book. But when I judge the parents, it's the nats, I, you know, 
I did uh, over six, just a little over 60 airplanes I judged in an hour, and I put them in the rows. Hey, Emilio. There'll be th three colors on this. Well, four colors. Plus gold leaf. When I judged the Nationals, I did six, oh, a little over 60 airplanes in an hour. And how they used to judge the Nationals, it would take three, four, five out. I mean, these guys had it all asked backwards. What happens is you get all these airplanes walking through the door, and uh, they have helpers. And the helpers are taking the airplanes and sitting them all down. And, and if you look at the pictures that I showed of the appearance points. It's a great big gymnasium. They're all sitting down. They, they're all mixed up. I said, when I judged appearance, I said, stop. I will handle every airplane at the door. And I took the airplane in my hand, and I, you know, I've been building 55 years. I took the airplane in my hand, and as I was walking out to the middle of the gymnasium, I took it, and I looked at it, I turned it over, and I set it on a row that I thought was appropriate. Then Jim Lynch and Charlie Reeves, we we only I think we only moved about three or four airplanes where I had misjudged. See how it goes is when you're judging these airplanes, you don't worry about the points. There's no sense when I do it, you don't look at well, this is a 10 19 pointer, this is an 18 point. You go, this airplane is better than that airplane. That airplane is better than this one. So you just start rowing them out in the, in the row, and whatever row they fall in is the row they get, eight, 19, 18, 17, 16, so on and so forth. The worst you can do is zero, but nobody gets zero that makes an effort in my book. I think he should, uh, 11 to 12, 13 points should be, the bottom, if you if the guy made an effort to put out a decent finish, you know, I'll give him something. He worked hard. Is he any is he as good as I am? No, he doesn't have as much experience. There was kids on the back row, but the kid had effort, you know. So I, you can't I don't know, you can't uh, belittle anybody for at least an effort because there's so many people that would rather just buy and fly and that's FAI and that's fine if you want to do that FAI meet we have one every four years and maybe some local FAI meets or whatever but this is the AMA and it's builder of the model and if you make the effort you deserve some points now in my personal opinion it should go back to 40 points like it used to be instead of 20 points Building this model, most guys take a year. Now, just think about this logically. Most guys take a year to build a model. I can do them in three months. Most guys take a year. They only want to give you 20 points. That's half the points per maneuver. So, for a maneuver. So, if you can get 40 points on a maneuver and, and you do it in three seconds, why shouldn't you get 40 points, up to 40 points on building the model? That takes you a year. But how the criteria used to be, it was originality, finish, craftsmanship, and paint. So you had 10 points for each category. Pretty simple to judge. It was a shitty paint job. You didn't give them 10 points. 1 to 10 is real easy to judge, just like scoring a, a gymnast or whatever. But a parent's points should be 40, not, not uh, 20. We used to get 5 points just to be able to start the motor within the first minute. They took that away because of electrics. Hey, 
It ain't my fault the guy's got a button. If I can get it started within the you know the minute or the allotted time, why shouldn't I get those points? Never let anybody take something away because you'll never get it back. That's just the way it works in life. You'll never get it back. And I and if 40 points comes back, I would be totally shocked. Totally shocked. Because there's too many whiners about, well, I can't build, so I, you know, and I don't get no points for it. Why should he get any points for it? The world just ain't fair. <laughs> That's my rant for the day. That's my builder of the model rant. One year, Charlie Bauer gave out participation trophies. I said, Charlie, what is this? He said, well, that's for being here. Hey, it is worth nothing. Why did you waste your money? You know, I didn't earn this. This, this uh, hobby is all about earning it. You know, earn your, earn your respect or earn your... Your place in the in the points for I can't fly as good as Paul Walker. Whose fault is that? It ain't Paul Walker's. It's mine because I don't have the time to go out and practice. Do I have the ability? You bet I do. But it takes dedication and motivation, and he should be rewarded with whatever. And that's the same with Fitzgerald and Brett Buck and you know all the top guys that are top 20 year after year after year, they're taking their time and burning hundreds of gallons of fuel. And if you think I'm kidding, I think Matt Newman burned a pallet of fuel before the Nats one year, a pallet full. So, and he deserves credit for that. Now, he used to be, I used to, he used to not be able to beat me, <laughs> but, but he's practicing and I'm not, and that's just the way it is. I think he did better when he flew his stupas than he did with them stupid electrics, but that's just my opinion. Let's see. Do we want to fix that now, or do we want to do something else? Oh, I was going to do this tip. That's what I was going to do. This turned out pretty good, really, considering. It only has a few bugaboos that need to be fixed we still got a pretty pretty nose down attitude on the uh high point of the wing so i don't know how much i don't know how much i can add with and become tail heavy This tip here that I'm fixing, it's not that I didn't shape it because I did. I must have bumped it on something and it got a flat spot. But it's all fixed now, so we'll repaint that. Leading edge gets blue, so we're not going to worry about that. It's relatively smooth. It's still got that one problem I don't like, but there's nothing I can do about it now. Kind of a kind of an inherent fact with built-up wings. That's why I'm going to go to a the next airplane I build is going to have a foam leading edge, just like I did my uh, Tucker Special. Not the big Tucker, the little Tucker. But I've learned my lesson on that. That that looks so much better, but you give up an ounce. It's just the way it is. So I need to sand this. So let's take that off. 
we can't have an orange spinner on there. It'll be red. It's all about sanding, 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 sanding. I don't have a three blade Randy spinner, so I got to use one of these jobs. You know, we were talking today, everything on all these airplanes is custom made. Just the way it is, you know. Bell cranks, propellers, landing gear, control horns. It's all handmade. Everything's handmade. The canopy, not this one, but, you know, we can make canopies. And you saw how we're making spinners and back plates today. And those plungers. We're going to do some. Casmonato makes these carbon tanks. And uh, he does a beautiful job. Really nice job. However, he's not making the size we need anymore. So we're going to make our own. But instead out of carbon, because we can't get that real prepay. I mean, you can, but who wants to spend that much kind of money for that stuff? We're just going to make them out of fiberglass. Thank you. Good looking pilot's seat. Yeah. Gomez Adams is flying this plane. I'm just sanding this spinner. I'll put some primer on it. And... Uh, It'll get to my normal scallops on the nose, red, white, and blue. And this spinner will be painted red to match the scallop. So it all looks like one piece. You want it to look like a real airplane. You don't want it to look like an art. <laughs> God, I hate ours. I don't know whether you saw it today or not, but Mark Blauman, thank you, Mark, for the $50 Super Chat. That, uh, that really helps me out. You have no idea how much effort it takes to do these videos. I mean, I like building... But for me to sit and talk, thank you so much. For me to sit and talk for hours on end with nobody to talk to is pretty difficult. So what I'm doing here is uh, get this orange paint off. This one was on, I can't remember what airplane. I had it on. I think it had I had it on the other. Being new to this, I am learning, but yes, I understand. Oh, it takes a ton of work to do this stuff. And I don't make nothing to speak of on YouTube and you know, there's some ads. So you guys, when you watch this live, there should be no ads that show up. And if there is, let me know. 
But after the live stream is over, the ads pop up. Everybody's whining about watching ads. Well, if you watch it live, you wouldn't see no ads. And trust me, I don't make what you guys think on the mad. I think I make about five dollars per thousand views. <laughs> so it takes a thousand views to get five bucks. You know, some of the bigger channels they make <clears throat> they make out. I wonder if I still got my Al Rave Bearcat template for t-shirt. Even live, when you first log on, one ad can skip it in five seconds, but so no real problem. Yeah, I know. I mean... If you like the ad, support support the advertisers. That's how, that's how it makes a little more money for the channel. Of course, I can't tell you what to do. You do what you want. You can you can see that I am not so up to date. How could I see that, Alexander? Well, there was a ton of paint on this thing. Been painted three times. It's always one on an orange airplane, though. This time it's going to go white. Oh. He asked about balancing the spinner. This spinner weighs seven grams. There's no need to balance it. It weighs nothing. And oh, I see. I didn't see it. This post weighs seven grams. So spinning on its axis, it would even if it was a gram out it wouldn't be enough to, to bother a randy smith spinner on the other hand weighs an ounce and about an ounce and a half and that could be a problem so you got you get yourself a prop balancer one of the dual axis, axis prop balancers and you put it between the two wheels and you just start rotating and take off from the heavy side Because I think an ounce and a half, a, a spinner that weighs an ounce and a half, could cause a problem. But they're CNC machined, the good ones. And I don't, I don't normally balance them or even check them because they're... No, I do not make this spinner. This is an unobtained, this is 50 bucks. It's a Medusa spinner. It's been discontinued. This is from the Ukraine. I wish I could get more. I had three of them, can only find two. See, I got one. Hey, no problem. Any questions that you guys want to know the answer to, I can't tell you that... I can't tell you that I'm always right. But I try to be. And if I'm not right, 
or don't know the answer, I'll figure it out. I'll, I know somebody who knows. Is, it, is balancing a spinner a good idea? Yeah. Do I do it? No. They're CNC machines. They should be close. If you feel a vibration and you can't figure out where it's coming from, balance the, the spinner. But Now, propellers is a different story. Propellers are a, a long lever away from the center of mass, and they could cause a big, a big issue. They can knock your motor mount out. At the Nationals one year, I can't remember the guy's name, but it was a beautiful crossfire. Had a prop strike, threw one blade off the prop, and that thing sounded like a hurdy -gur. I mean, it was just terrible. Boom! And within a half a lap, the nose ripped off the airplane, disintegrated. I have never seen that before in my life until that year. So can it happen? Yeah, it can happen. I think that's probably good enough. See? Abandonment. Now, as far as this rudder goes and cutting a five-eighths of an inch off the top, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some template material or some cardboard or poster board or whatever, and I'm going to cut it off or cut the, the poster board five-eighths of an inch lower, tape it on there and look and see if, see if it would make a difference. That rudder was light. It was only seven grams. But if I took two grams off of it, it's two grams. I think I'd think, well, two grams, what is that? Well, in a 5G turn, it's 10 grams. In a 7G turn, it's a quarter ounce. That's a lot. Not much in static, but a lot in... Uh, Inertia. The hardest thing about these spinners is indexing them. They just don't want to get onto the back plate very good. That's what I was doing today, grinding the uh, Now we made we made these uh, these ends. This is not a Medusa end. This is so much better. It's about a thousand times better. It holds the spinner true on there, so that it doesn't walk. Them other stupid things they screwed right onto the prop shaft. It was terrible. So this uses a Randy Smith style prop nut, so you can get your prop tight. Man, I sure hope I can keep her under 60 ounces. So, I'll, I'll leave it up. You know, we'll look at it. You guys can look at this rudder, and you tell me what, what, it, what you think. So, I'll bring, pull this back. We'll look across the room. Look at that rudder. Is that too big? Should it be a half inch, five eight shorter? I can tell you this, that it's the same height as the Junar rudder. 
just a different shape. No, it's the right height. It's it's the right height. I better not mess with it. That airplane, this air, this airplane here flies so damn good that you can't argue with success. So we'll leave it. We'll leave it as is. And that that rudder that I just had in my hand is a tracing off my original Junar XL. Now this is not going to be a Continental XL. It's going to be a Continental Plus, just because that's the way it is. But I think I've captured the essence of the airplane pretty well. Pretty well. No, they're not. They're not from the Junar because... That's a PA-75. It looks good from here. Yeah, well, yeah, thank you. So, uh, I think I'll do this in gold leaf, too. Now, this, this is gold leaf on this one. I'll probably use the same font. But it'll be engine turned instead of variegated. It's going to be variegated, but it'll be engine turned because I got the right sizing coming. You know what? Let's look at wrapping these lines while I, while I got a hand on it. You guys, uh, she really looks something on the profile. Thank you, Craig. Let's uh, let's wrap these lines. So I got these got these eyelets, but they're all crappy. So I'll put some new ones in it. Put them back in the box for cleaning at a later date. We got a couple new ones here. One. One thing that I do when I'm building, especially when I get to this state here, it's always forward. There's always something to do. No matter what, there's still a lot of work left to do on this airplane. So, it's kind of like when I'm at work, if you, you know, I don't stand around at work, so why would I stand around working on my own stuff? Now, there's kids at work that stand around. I don't know how they do it. Waste the whole day talking on the phone jaw jacking with each other so how we're going to do this is let's see if i got a felt tip yeah i do okay i pulled this one out i'm going to mark this here one half inch from the uh, just approximate one half inch from the end we'll pull pull this one out mark this one oh. mark this one approximately one half inch from the end so now we'll move them equal and that's pretty close so what I have here on this mark is I don't want the ends of the uh, 
the ends of the eyelets closer than that mark. No closer than that. So now I've got to get my fixings. Let's see here. Where is it? I have red and black shrimp tubing. You don't have to do this. It's uh, just my personal print. You can put epoxy on it or whatever. I just think that it looks more professional to have these in sh shrink tubing. You bet. And they don't know anything either. We were just talking about that today. Okay. So I have two pieces of uh, one black, one red. The red one goes on the downside. Don't know what happened, but disregard that comment. What are you talking about? <laughs> what comment? I see some guys put red on the upline. I don't. I put red on the downline. Red is danger. Stop. So that's the front line. Slide that on. I guess I could slide them on afterwards. It don't matter. I think I got the small on it. First thing you got to understand is I got thick skin. <laughs> okay, I got a baggie of eyelets. One baggie of eyelets, so we don't want any more than that. I have a spool of wire. Of course, I have a Jim Lee spool of wire around here too somewhere, but I can't never seem to make them work on a lead out. Sparky, does your shrink tubing have glue in it? No. So we're going to take about that much, quite a bit. Two foot, probably. You want to leave everybody everything as flexible as possible. Now, I even I even put the heat the heat shrink on my lead outs at the bell crank. You want to leave everything as flexible as possible. If you put glue on it, I've seen a lot of guys put epoxy on these, plus they're flying. What's that, what that does, it makes a hard point. So the thing is working back and forth, working back and forth. And even though this is 80 pound, you know, I think it's 40 thousandths or I don't know what the hell it is. Let's see here. It's uh, 80 pound. Eighty pound, thirty-eight, thirty-eight thousandths uh, wire. If you make it hard, 
it'll work hard and work back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and snap. <laughs> Off it'll go. No good. Okay, so we're going to come out, I would say, about, uh, about an inch and a half. Somewhere we're going to make a loop. I've shown how to do this a di couple of dozen times. We're going to get it started here. This, the, this is always the hard part, getting it started. At least it is for me, because it wants to do just what it's doing. <laughs> Come on. I hear a Chinook. they be flying a Chinook for around here. The way that I do these The way that I do these is I can take the lines off of Dr. Pepper. I can take the, the lines off of Junar. I usually can hook them up to any one of my airplanes without having to adjust the handle, at least not more than a sixteenth of an inch. When you saw me fly the Junar, or fly the Dr. Pepper airplane. I took those lines from the Junar. I did not make a handle adjustment. Handle adjustment's a, a fine-tune type thing, and I'll do that if necessary. But I haven't got enough flights on it to really tell where we're at. So, God, it's going to spring. I need to get an eyelid out of here and get it started. I get these from, what is it, Melvin Shooty? The combat guy, get them at the Nats. These are probably the best eyelets. They're the small ones. So. Damn. I'm having a hard time with this one today. <clears throat> what is a cool trick, Ronnie? So now I got to get it down, start headed in the right direction so it'll quit springing.
There we go. We got it started. Looks like crap. There we go. We got her now. Cooking low with gas. Make these as neat as possible. You know, I think this is overkill, but if you uh, if you don't do it this way, and let's say you have an accident, guess who's liable if you didn't follow the rules? I think we got $2 million insurance or whatever, only if your homeowner's insurance don't cover it. I think it's a scam myself. AMA, what a joke. What do they do for us? More bureaucratic BS. Let's see, is that long enough? A little bit more. Now I make my lines equal. Some guys like to make them offset. But if you make them offset, you're not going to be able to change lines between airplanes. That's good. So now this wire, this this tail here gets bent back on itself towards the front. This is pretty difficult to get started to. <laughs> Everything's hard. I keep wanting to slip off there. So let's do it this way. I think I'll cut that. I'll cut that so I can get around it. What happened to my cutters? Well, we got these. Now I have those uh, Nipex uh, little bolt cutters, but I also have Nipex side cutters. These are regular, just regular side cutters. These are the greatest. I got snap-on side cutters. I don't even use them anymore. Worst purchase I ever, I ever made. Snap-on side cutters are crap. They're not sharp. There we 
we go. That made it easy. So you just uh, roll back up towards the top. It's real simple. All the, everything we do here is so simple. I know you guys, some of you guys, well, it's difficult. It's not. You're making it difficult. Just do everything in steps. Like when I build this RC airplane, we're going to build the wing, and then we're going to build a fuselage, and then we're going to build a tail, and then we're going to build a rudder and put it all together. Four parts. No big deal. Same thing I do with the truck bodies. No big deal. I build these uh, backpack toolboxes that go behind the cab. And uh, we make them out of stainless. We make them out of galvanil. And when I first started doing it, do you think you could do that? Well, shit, it's only like 10 pieces. <laughs> Why wouldn't I be able to do it? Well, on a Harley is thousands of pieces. And I knew where every piece went. Okay. So you take the tail and you twist them together. Twist it back on itself, cut it off, you don't need all that. Not that it weighs anything, it's just in the way. Okay, what line is this one? This line is the down line. So it gets red. Take the red, put it on here, get the heat gun, don't use a lighter, I see heat shrink done with a lighter. It makes me think, what an amateur. Now look how nice that looks. Is that not professional? So now we're going to pull this out. We're going to make these equal. I guess I can tape them together. Maybe. Maybe. I got the drops. You see, hang on this shit. Are we still online? Haven't anybody asked any questions here lately?
Okay. Now I want that uh, the same length. So how would I do that? I need another piece of wire two foot long. Do you use two foot? No, but I'd much rather have more than I than not enough. You can get this stuff at Radio Shack, but they don't have Radio Shacks anymore, so you get it on Amazon. I don't even think there's a Radio Shack around anymore, is there? Used to be when you go into Radio Shack and had a question or whatever, the guy behind the counter, the nerd-looking guy with a pocket protector and glasses, could tell you what resistor you needed or whatever. Now, they know nothing. Nobody knows anything. I'd go to Home Depot and ask an electrical question or something. Boy, I don't know shit. <laughs> no, that ain't right. When my dad was alive, when I had a question like that, I would call him. Because he was one of them old guys from the old school that could, could repair anything with a stick and a rock, <laughs> you know. I sure miss calling him on Sundays. He really knew his shit. Of course, I dropped it. Of course, I dropped it. I could say getting this started is always the hard part. It wants to creep on you. I suppose I could use my forceps. Why didn't I think of that before? Okay, I dropped the eyelet down here. Where'd it go? Can't go far because it's not very big. Oh. Not very big. Can't accelerate too far. Doesn't have enough weight. So we got forceps now. Let's use forceps. What a nice thing of that before. Why didn't I think of that before? Yeah, I don't know. See how it looks. Hmm. Got that wire caught in there. How the hell did that happen? There it is. Not going to bother with forceps. I'm going to take this tape off too. It's in the right spot. I need a little flexibility. Just a smidge. Good.
neat and tight. Tighten it up on the on the go around. Back when I was a kid, we used to race slot cars, slot cars in the '60s. Uh, I used to wind armatures, 29, 29s. Get a armature number 29 wire with 29 turns, and some ball magnets, and them slot cars used to haul ass. I mean, they really scooted along. Thingies were just unbelievably fast. We had a slot car track at the end of the at the end of the mall where my dad had his pool store and hobby shop. My dad was pretty slick. He siphoned ten percent off his pool store and hobby shop to open a bar in the desert. So he could retire. Oh, okay, let's see here. Pretty close. Close enough. Okay, we need to cut this off right there. How many people are watching? Are we still online? I can't tell. Always forward, never straight. We have 18 watchers and 10 likes. Okay. You guys getting excited about the RC build coming up? I might start that tomorrow. Going to be doing, uh, I'm not going to do that every day like I do with the control line. I'll build for an hour or two, maybe once or twice a week, and that's that's about all I'm going to be able to stomach, really. <laughs> because I really have no interest in RC. The only thing I'm doing it for is to show the RC crew that building these airplanes, well, they're far more difficult to build. I mean, I've built RC. I used to build build um, RC airplanes for Schaefer's Hobby to hang in his hobby shop. I built a quarter scale Cub I sold to Gary Hajak. It has a Super Tiger 90 in it. It should have had a bigger motor, but. Oh, that's what I, I remember now. That's how I got my Jimmy Casal Spectrums. I built that uh, quarter scale Piper Cub. And I had it all finished except for color. And Gary had two Jimmy Casal Spectrums that he got from Jimmy Casal after the Nationals or the World Championships or whatever. And I traded in that airplane 
for two of his, two of the Jimmy Cassell Spectrums. I flew the hell out of them airplanes. I gave, well, I didn't give one, but I sold one to John Garrett, and he flew the hell out of it until it hit the ground. And then the other one, I'll be damned if I can remember where it went. I don't remember. It's been 25 years ago or more. See, that was two foot, and we, we only got that much wire left. Pretty dangerous what I'm doing there. I'm not going to do it. You'll be watching the RC build. Well, that's coming up. We might do it start tomorrow. The Astro Hog. You guys need to go over to RC Universe and tell them that I'm doing that. Of course, I got an account over there, but I don't go over there. I haven't been over there in 10 years. Yeah. Well, we didn't get much done tonight, but we did get to, oh, shit, I've been an hour and a half already. Shit, I got more time in today than I thought. Didn't get a whole lot done, but, we, you know, all, moving forward, strip the paint off of this. I don't worry about taping up the uh, lead outs to keep them from getting painted because you just saw I just scratched the paint off in about two seconds. The paint won't, the dope won't stick to that wire. And if it does, you just take a little thinner and wipe them off. All right, there we go. That come out nice. What do you think? Will that pass the test? Well, as stated, I've been on an hour and 35 minutes. I'm kind of hungry. I need to eat something. So I got to, I didn't stop at the supermarket on the way back. So I'm going to have to rustle up something. Chili and beans, chili and nachos. Some uh, top ramen. I didn't. I don't have shit to make. Maybe I'll make some mashed potatoes and corn right now. Yeah, let's see here. I need to do this. There we go. Thank you very much, uh, Mark, for the super chat. That was. It made the evening. Made the day. Because we didn't do anything all day. So that helps. I mean, it really helps the channel. 
And, uh, you know, I'm trying to bring content to everybody. And uh, I'm just doing what I can. Like, subscribe, share. Hey, and uh, if you enjoy my content, please consider becoming a, a member. It's that little join button down next to the subscribe button. Till I see you tomorrow. Keep building. See ya.